this uh, fear of missing out is somewhat uh, discounted by maybe the elderly demographic 40 45 plus saying that well if i don't want uh, social media i just uh, log out i just switch off what's the big deal about that true i suspect here that it's not like just because you are above 40 you already have some self control but just to be a bit objective this is something which i found that uh, what are the habits of like how much have marketers uh, been successful in uh, giving these kind of habits to people today so let me just come to this note of mine as to okay it is something interesting now this is just one country and that too about five six years ago this big uh, survey was done i think it may resonate with most of the other countries and i'm not talking about just first world or second world or third world like that <clears throat> 98% the it begins with 35% of facebook users are below the age of 25 which is a big chunk 98% of them use their application on smartphones only so sometimes they oldie like me i could be seeing my facebook page on a desktop but <laughs> In today's times, 98% of the younger crowd check social media on their smartphones alone. 90% check their phone when they wake up. It means okay. the first thing you do as soon as you are awake in the so-called real world, mm. you, are, you are online. 87% on public transport. So even if you feel like you are going somewhere, like previously the self-help motivation speakers would say that use your commuting time for development. Read a good book or oh, you can't read. So at least take your audio book with you. Or if somebody has done some research or homework, then you or a businessman may uh, just make a mental note of something speak it in his private sound recorder and uh, hear it himself while in commute. So commuting time was seen as a uh, time which is available and which should not be misutilized. But now that also has been taken over by social media. 84% while watching TV. Oh. That means so, even they, they're not so you're not even so. properly entertaining yourself, you're not properly enlightening yourself, you're simply being crushed. As in India, we have this you have seen the sugarcane press, which old style rural India they just hand cranked uh, sugarcane press mm. where you just put one sugarcane stock from one end and comes out the other, and the juice is being extracted. So social media seems to be doing something like that to the to the mind. Uh, oh. What else? So so one person is saying that this is a great uncontrolled experiment on kids. <laughs> it's a it's a great uncontrolled experiment on kids. So oh God, so yeah. what does what does FOMO can do in terms of? Tangible damage, decrease in personal privacy, increased detachment from friends and family, increased feelings of loneliness, which is now a uh, epidemic almost. Accepted disease, at least UK and Japan have a ministry for combating loneliness, mm. dissatisfaction with one's life. So all are these all are the fundamental drivers of uh, the negative consequences of FOMO. And these in turn are related to and significantly aggravate. Like this is something where I feel lonely, I am detached, I am dissatisfied. 
so the negativity is is restricted to my own body and mind but then it aggravates increased unfair judgment of others whether it is on the basis of race community skin color political views and that's why we see this rash of so called tv shows uh which proclaim to be having some discussion but it's mostly below the belt hitting what do you mean the below the belt in belt in this below context? the belt hitting below the belt that means it's not exactly for a dialogue or understanding the ramifications of a particular political decision it is just uh, like what we call in sanskrit vitanda just arguing okay. for the sake of arguing okay and uh, then change in personality paranoia jealousy and finally which could be very consequential for our students or those who are studying a significant decrease in concentration levels